Hi, I'm Tim Sales. How do you determine what is valuable information? Do all authors have the same value to you? Well, of course the answer is no. Everyone knows the answer is no. But if you were to ask people, what method do you use to determine if what you read or hear is valuable or not? you'll get some pretty goofy answers. I had a lady actually tell me that she determines the validity of what she reads based on whether the information is balanced. Meaning if the author gives credit to both sides of an argument, then she believes that content to be true and valuable. That's pretty goofy because based on her belief, if someone is absolutely certain about their subject, she doesn't trust or value it. Another person claimed that it depends if the website or presenter looked professional. That too is goofy and can lead one down many wrong paths. My former profession was underwater bomb squad. The information we operated on meant life or death. I learned there how to place the correct value on what I read or heard. My desire here with this short clip is to share with you how to determine whose advice to take. The very first thing you need to determine from any author you're reading or listening to is whether you're hearing their belief on the subject or is what you're hearing provable fact. I'm saddened at how people will read a person's belief on a subject and forever operate their life as if the author gave them provable information. I remember a history professor giving the class his religious beliefs as if it was factual. The sad part is there were people who took that professor's belief mostly because he appeared to be an authority to all of us. But the information he gave us on religion was his beliefs only, none of which was provable. That being said, you have to be very careful in reading or listening to statements of so-called facts that mislead you. As an example, I recently read, your odds of making big money in network marketing are lower than winning at gambling in Las Vegas. Well, factually, the highest odds you can get in Las Vegas is the roulette table at slightly under 50-50 odds. So the author's statement is true. But how the author tricked you was by implying that making money in network marketing is based on odds or chance. It's not. It's based on performance. So the whole statistic is actually irrelevant. Had the author actually succeeded in network marketing, he would have known this. The author also tricked you by taking the statistic out of context. The author didn't tell you that no business venture in the world will give you those same 50-50 odds. There is no money-making concept in the world where 50% of the people who try it make big money. So while his statement sounded factual, it was misleading. But probably the most helpful concept I can teach you is that there are three types of authors of content. Just so you know, my use of the word author includes both written and spoken communication. Here are the three types of authors. Those who have never done it, those who have done it and failed, those who have done it and succeeded. Author type number one are authors who have never done what they're writing or talking about. Newspapers, magazines, television writers and reporters rarely have done what they're writing or talking about. Their information comes from hearsay and as an outsider looking in. Many attorneys, professors, parents and in-laws give advice on subjects they've never done. The majority of the books at the bookstore are from authors who have never done what they're writing and talking about. They can write or speak about it, but cannot succeed at doing it. Their advice is rarely sound because it's based on invention and other person's information or hearsay. This problem is compounded when an author simply repeats something they heard from the media. Now there are two layers of people who can't do what it is they're talking about, but think they know something about it. Authors who have never done what it is that they're writing about or who have never succeeded at it cannot possibly place the correct importance on the subject. You can always identify authors who have never done it because their content is slightly or grossly off the correct subject. As an example, I read a web article claiming that multi-level marketing success was mathematically impossible. Do you see what I mean about authors writing about what they've never done? He completely missed the subject. And as for his mathematical theory, that's like claiming that it's scientifically impossible for a bumblebee to fly. Has it ever occurred to that author to just look? The MLM industry sells $109 billion worth of products and thousands of people earn millions of dollars. Plus, the oldest MLM company is still growing. 
Author type number two are authors who have failed at what they're writing or talking about. When someone has failed at what they write or talk about, it is common for them to be critical of the subject and those who do it. When someone is critical of something, they are inclined to find fault with it. Why? Because something about the subject is a complete mystery to them and they feel inadequate. They obviously couldn't figure out some part of it and they quit before they ever found out. Take for example a person who wanted to be a real estate investor but failed at it. He will project his negative experience onto whatever he writes or says about the business. He'll typically write and talk about what's hard, wrong, or dangerous about real estate. Why? Because he never figured it out and someone who succeeds at it proves his inadequacy on the subject of real estate. His worst nightmare is people succeeding at real estate investing. His negativity may focus on the aspect of real estate investing that caused him to fail, but more than likely he doesn't know why he failed. So he tries to make everything about real estate wrong, including anyone who does real estate. Just a warning, on every subject there are more people that quit at it than people who succeed. So you may find much more negative information about your subject than positive information. Do not take advice from authors who have quit at what they write or talk about. They are resentful and do not want you to succeed where they failed. Others' success only proves their inadequacy. They may claim that they only want to protect you, but in reality, they only want to protect themselves from a sense of failure by preventing you from trying and succeeding. Author type number three are authors who have succeeded at what they're writing and talking about. If an author has succeeded at what they are writing or talking about, they are a valuable asset to you and their advice is worth listening to. They know what is important and what is not important about the subject. If you hear information from author type one or two that concerns you, ask author type three to explain it to you. They will be able to explain things and categorize the information so that it's logical. Please note that there is a vast difference between someone who has been successful at their subject and someone who has been merely educated about it. Just because a person has studied a subject or has been doing the subject for 20 years doesn't mean they can successfully do it. A beautician can study all about hair. That doesn't mean she can cut hair to her client's satisfaction. A psychiatrist may have been able to listen to her teachers and may have been able to read the required textbooks and may have even been able to pass the state board examination on the subject. But can she fix another person's problems? If she can't, don't take her advice. A student who has been educated on a subject has only proven that she can be a successful student. She has not proven that she can successfully perform in the subject. The person you should accept advice from on a subject you're researching is the person who has gotten the results you desire. If you want to succeed, take the advice of those who have been successful. In conclusion, the easiest advice in the world to give or receive in business or money-making ventures is don't do it. But keep this idea in your mind about money. The most amount of money you'll ever lose is the amount you'll never make. Let's say you're looking at a business where you can make a million dollars a year that requires an investment of a few thousand dollars. There are people making that amount in the business you're researching, but someone gives you the simple advice of don't do it. So you don't. You may think you saved a few thousand dollars, but what you really lost was a million dollars a year. The cost of that poor advice you took was way more expensive than the few thousand dollars you saved. If you read a website or listen to someone that is recommending you not do a particular business, just ask them for a better alternative where the same return is available. And of course, don't take their advice unless they've succeeded in the business they're recommending. I personally do not have a stake in what you choose to do in network marketing. But being someone who has been financially successful, it's heartbreaking to me how many people are stopped or derailed by some author who doesn't know what they're talking about and shouldn't be giving advice on something they haven't been able to succeed at. Thanks for watching this clip. I hope this information helps you to determine whose advice to take. I'm Tim Sales.